Entschuldigung, und ähm, we don't choose our subjects, you know? History does that for us. Um, this poem is called In a Time of War. Flies caught in the sap of the living tree someday will be precious, dressed in amber, just so the past appears to the present gem-like in its perfect preservation, the hardened gold of yesterday, a relic through which today's sun shines. But those who are caught in the sticky sap of actual time, insects in the odds against them, who struggle in the ooze, slowly sink into the mass, the numberless, anonymous dead, till the atrocious becomes the mundane, our senses numb from the sheer litany of repetition. Let us then just watch this one small, desperate fly stuck first by the feet, and then in its struggles entangled entirely in the glob of sap, its wings heavy as a brass angel's until it is all at once still a dark speck in a bubble of sap oozing from the felled tree in a forest marked for the mill. How many millennia will pass before a teardrop lavalier of amber carrying its small cargo of loss will adorn the vanity of another creature, the fly a fossil of a species no longer present on the earth, the earth itself a speck in a cosmos where galaxies are carded like cotton on a comb and pulled out into a distance where some new fabric is being spun and shimmers in the firelight of countless burning suns. <coughs> um, I'm going to end with the sun in a more benign uh, mood. Um, this is a poem which is actually written in a poem chain with um, some women friends. And so literally, um, this poem is in a way one woman putting words into the hands of another. Um, and it is about the story of, very famous story, the day that Annie Sullivan spelled water into one of Helen Keller's hands and spilled the water into the other. Um, I think if it had an epigraph, it would be Theodore Rutgers, great line, in a dark time the eye begins to see. Of oh, the sun she can remember. That was the last line of the poem that preceded by. After they had been in the woods, after the living tongue woke Helen's hand, afterwards they went back to the little house of exile, Annie and Helen, who had lived in the silent dark like a bat without radar in the back of a cave. And she picked up the broken doll she had dismembered that morning in her rage. And limb by limb, her agile fingers moving with their fine intelligence over each part, she remembered the little figure of the human and though she was inside now and it was still dark, she remembered the missing sun with a slow wash of warmth on her shoulders, on her back. As when you step shivering out of a dank shade into the sun's sudden balm. And as the warmth spread, it felt like the other side of water. And that is when she knew how light on water looks. And she put her outspread hands into the idea of it, and she lifted the lines of light, cross-hatched like a web, out of the water, and dripping, stretched the golden net of meaning in the light. Thank you.